What's up, y'all? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's about to be that time. Savage. Welcome to Theory for Theory, a new series on the channel that I've started where each break week, I'll go head to head with another One Piece YouTuber in the community to discuss their theories, my theories, community theories, and what have you. This week, our guest was Joy Boy Theories. The highly requested Troy Boy vs. Joy Boy collab has happened. We talked about Ghost Piece and, of course, 1043 and everything involved with that. Hope you enjoy. What's up, y'all? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's about to be that time. Okay. We should be live, everybody. Welcome to another Theory for Theory. All right, my guest today is Joy Boy Theories. Okay, so I mean, probably one of the uh, uh, more namely people for a theory for theory because he has theory in his name. Oh. <laughs> uh, so this is, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, most people in here, I'm sure you know who he is. And if you don't, his links are below, but uh, and uh, you've been a staple for a long time, man. I, you know, and we actually haven't had, uh, you know, we, we've had some back and forths on Twitter, and, and we talked a little bit at the last reverie. Uh, but this is our this is our first time, really. I think we're we're gonna like actually have some time to, you know, chat and everything. But I I don't I don't know what your what your journey is. How how long have you been uh, have you been with One Piece? When did you uh, how long have you been with the community? Like, when when did you get weekly? Yeah. Um, well, first off, I appreciate you having me on here. You know, this is super cool. I've been looking forward to, like, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you for a long time. Seriously, like, a long time. Uh, I didn't feel like the reverie was kind of, like, the right place for that for obvious reasons. You know, there's so much going on. But <laughs> actually being here, like, I really appreciate that. But, um, yeah, I first caught up to One Piece at... Uh, in the middle of Impletown. That's when I first caught up to One Piece. But at that time, I was in school. So, you know, there was a little bit of forum activity where I'd visit when I caught up to Chapters Weekly and I got up through Marineford. But I wasn't, I, I wouldn't say that I was the most active person. It was more so just, you know, listening to what other people were saying because I didn't know anybody who liked One Piece. And then, yeah, I, I, that, I dealt with that. <laughs> yeah, so, so after that, I was in college because, you know, I'm almost 30 now. It's like crazy, you know, like time flies. But I went to college after that around like, you know, 2010. Um, and so Here, they're saying your audio is a little low. So I've got to up that a bit. Let me see. Uh, it, it, let's do a test. Tell me how that's uh, that's going, guys. Uh, we did get a super chat here. How Joy I... boy plus Troy boy. <laughs> Am I bringing the hockey? Am I bringing the hockey or is or is my being over shout certified drip oh. it's about to get spicy shout out to Keenan B Man. with the big flex heat on feet look bro you know he's he, he's got the heat on feet bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's see so all right so now they're saying yeah they're saying perfect now all right Appreciate you, Keenan. Thanks for being here, man. So, uh, Joy Boy was just telling us that he's been current since it pulled down, and um, that... somewhere around it pulled down. And then I took a break. Yeah, I took a break in Fishman Island. I think a lot of people took a break in Fishman Island. You kind of know that you reached a high point, and so it's like, all right, all right I'm going to coast for a little bit. And then I came back in Dressrosa, uh, mm -hmm. where that was that was where I really started to to put down my my thoughts on the series into words. Because at that point in time, in I would say like you know 2009 2010 I don't think the theory community was quite as strong that was a trend that started to pick up around that time but I wasn't necessarily involved in so it wasn't until like 2013 2014 something like that I was on the forums and there's a lot of drama at the time you know where they had like conglomerate sites that would take theories from AP forums from Oro Jackson from Wherever it might be, and just like post those series on there, and and I, at the time I was like, well, I'm making these, and they're just copying and pasting them, so why don't I just join YouTube? And I never thought much would come from it. <laughs> Little <laughs> did I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. Surprise! 
<laughs> like, I like this. This is cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at those W's in the chat. Appreciate that, guys. Um, yeah, man. I mean, you know, my journey with One Piece is is is, is long. You know, it's like I, I I started with the series in 2002. Uh, I was one of the original admins of, of AP Forums, and um, I, I've been current since Skypea. But um, oh, that's you know, crazy. I, I did a little bit of uh, of YouTube back in like 2005, 2006, but um, <laughs> I was using stuff from the anime, and Toei was uh, even worse back then. So my whole channel got nuked, and um, I basically like I stopped with the YouTube stuff, just focused on life. Um, when Impel Down was around, uh, let's see, I think, uh, yeah, I was probably in college at the time, and, um, Fishman Island definitely was like, that was like a hard time in the community, because we were so hyped for, you know, the time skip, and everything like that, and then the pacing just seemed like it, you know, it felt like Thriller Bark again, which you, you weren't weekly for that, but that was, that was a really tough time in the community, because we just came off the high of Any's Lobby, and I saw a lot of people, especially in AP forums, kind of back away during Thriller Bark. And, but where we are right now in the story, which, you know, I feel is like a, you know, probably like a, you know, a good segue also is this, this reminds me of, you know, everything that's happening now with Joy Boy, you know, with Luffy and everything. When the, the chapter for Gear Second came out, right? <laughs> you know, I saw the uh, the meme that uh, Artur put up, you know. I'm something of a rubber expert myself. Uh, <laughs> you know, and... I retweeted that, by the way. What's that? I what? said I retweeted that, by oh, the way. I, oh, I, oh, I re oh, I retweeted that, too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but it reminds... This might, this might be slightly factual. <laughs> <laughs> when, when the Gear 2nd chapter came out, it was the same thing. Everybody, you know, thought they were a rubber rubber expert. By the end of that week, before the next chapter, which I'm pretty sure Oda did take a two-week break on that one, too, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, everybody knew what the word vulcanization meant. You know? <laughs> really, that that was like every every thread, everything was just all vulcanization, vulcanization. You knew that all along. Yeah, so, and, you know, people were, to people have been talking about, you know, the, the natural state of rubber, what you know what Luffy could do for for a very long time but this you know this stuff that's that's going on man it's it's so neat I, I have a, a I'm gonna have a video I'm hopefully hopefully I can get it out tomorrow I, I shot it earlier in the week where I went through the story and I found all of the foreshadowing for resin in the story and and basically like the archipelago it's just one giant exposition arc, I feel, for what Luffy's going to be able to do. And uh, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. I, 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 you know, this resin thing is new to me. Uh, I don't know who first theorized it or whatever. It's hard to keep track of that sort of stuff. I'm sure we uh, can go to AP you know, forums and find something from 15 years ago. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, but it absolutely blew up, and I started to look into it. You know, and it's like, wait a second. You know, like things like like Oda's favorite panel. Or one of his favorite panels being one you wouldn't expect, you know, like an introduction to Sapa Odi and mention of, of resin. It doesn't stand out to you as like, oh, this makes sense, you know? And you have this moment in the chapter where, especially with the Gorosei's conversation just before this, he's clearly leading our thoughts, at least, it, even if it's not true, that Luffy's devil fruit may possess capabilities that, that you couldn't expect, not to mention the end of the chapter where <laughs> weird things are happening, you know? So it's like, level of hype is unbelievable because we've read the whole story you know and this, we, <laughs> we still weren't prepared <laughs> oh man yeah man and you know but my favorite thing about that panel is everybody wants to talk about robin wiping the resin onto usopp and saying that it's sticky and i mean like i think that that's going to factor in as well but the the more important thing is um um and you know i mean this is spoilers for everybody that you know in my community that'll end up watching the video that i'm going to put out also but i like, Papagoo, just being this, like, gigantic lore dumper is, is crazy to me. Because he's the one that explains that, like, uh, Saba, Saba Odi is, like, covered in this unique natural resin, right? 
And um, uh, there's actually a, a Reddit post that was made by community member Chad Ocho, all right, who actually is legitimately a rubber expert, all right? So everybody that wants to be a rubber expert, like this man <laughs> said that, that he actually like works with rubber, polymers, resin, all of this stuff, like that's his, that's his job. So he put a thing where, uh, on Reddit where he like went into all of that stuff and that's, <laughs> you know, so that's, that's cool. And there's a lot of really viable stuff here, but Papagoo, man, he told us about, uh, but actually the, but my favorite thing that he said was what if the archipelago in the same way that Punk Hazard was affected by Kuzan and Sakazuki was its environment was changed because of Luffy. Uh, well, not because of Luffy, sorry, because of Joy Boy, because Double of the because of the original user awakening of the Goma Goma no Mi, and I think there's a lot of people in the community that are against this idea of resin because they're like, oh, but but it, it's not rubber, and it's like, but it is. Like the resin is what makes rubber. It's you know, there's so many different factors and so many ways that the story can go. It's just it's just the natural form of it. It's the base model. Right. Yeah, so. you know, so so again, so again, a, a, a not expert trying to pretend like he is an expert, you know. But I, I, I've I've <laughs> dug into it as much as I can. I feel like the way that I make sense of it, and you feel free to correct me if you think that I'm wrong. But you know, there's like rubber uh, or latex is created. It's a it's a substance that's produced, a liquid substance that's produced when you damage a rubber tree, right? Mm -hmm. Resin is a liquid substance that's produced when you damage pretty much anything else. You know, so in a sense, they're the same thing, but at the same time, resin is more encompassing. It can cover more things. There's more things that it can do. Rubber is kind of a, you know, obviously you have processing, right? Like vulcanization, you have natural versus, uh, you know, artificial rubber, for instance. But, you know, like rubber is one thing, but then you can take things that are very similar to it and change the physical properties of them in so many different ways to be useful. And that's where I feel like the fruit, if this is true, has the most potential. Because, you know, it's like, like, for instance, I think about, you know, I, I think that Gear Fourth was created because of hockey, like Luffy made a breakthrough for, from hockey. But like, what if, and this is just realistically speaking, what if there's limitations to rubber itself, which prevented Luffy from blowing up his muscles? And so then something like resin, right, where you can change the properties of your body in subtle ways, harden all of a sudden it. make something like that possible. Exactly. Harden it. Exactly. Yeah. Harden it. Softer, sticky, you know, anything physical that you can imagine. Papa and it would also, you know. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, no, just to uh, uh, jump in there real quick, but like Papa Goose spends a lot of time talking about the durability of the resin. So, you know, the hardening and all of that, that's what's going to allow Luffy to go up against uh, enemies in the future, like a Kainu, I think. Where he'll be able, if he's able to produce resin, similar to how Katakuri can produce mochi, and, uh, you know, Mr. Three can produce wax. Like, if that's part of the awakening, Luffy will be able to create, like, different moves. He'll be able to use his imagination to uh steal from more enemies that he's fought which he does all the time you know where he'll be able to create resin walls like mr three resin swords resin mallets turn snake man into a literal oh, snake man. you know um one of my favorite things about this that actually um really blows my mind and gives me chills right is the fact that the resin is what is used to coat ships and i believe wholeheartedly that what what rayleigh took three days to do the next time that the straw hats have to make a quick getaway go to fishman island luffy's going to be able to do that in three seconds and coat the entire ship and they're going underwater i mean that's just one of those things that you know nobody thinks about at the time there's a solution to a problem that we haven't yet even encountered and that's just me it's genius you know being like five steps ahead of the curve but, um, you know, I, I really don't have too much to say to this because this is one of those things. I like theories, but this is creative. You know what I mean? This is like purely from Oda's imagination. There is no doubt that if this is true, he's going to blow us out of the water with how he's able to use it. And really, the, the focus is just simply or blow us into the water. Because the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Luffy would be able, exactly. He, he could probably oh, true. Th no, seriously. Like this. Why people always say why are the Gorosei upset about this? If Luffy coats himself like a ship, 
he'll be able to go underwater and swim. In Fishman Island, Caribou calls it a diving suit when they put the bubbles on. That's just foreshadowing to me that Luffy's going to be able to fight underwater now without any limitations when he stretches his arm outside of the bubble because his entire body will be the bubble. And I just hope so. I re Seven. really hope so. I mean, just th this is one of those things where you know, I've talked to some people who were kind of, you know, eh, the chapters and, eh, you know, like things that we expected. Um, but, you know, it's like for this, it just it blows my mind, right? There's so much there's information overload, you know, for how this can potentially be taken where I wasn't prepared for. And shout out to Chad Ocho, our rubber expert. He's in the chat. He said, thanks for the shout out again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is a video in the works to better Don't call me rubber. out, man. Just stay quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Chad, if you're doing a video, definitely put it in the Discord and, and all of that. Like, you know, um, and then Nova member for 10 months. Said, shout out Joy Boy Theories, a.k.a. Luffy Theories. This is hype. And... Um, uh, my guy Maxo is in here. He said, uh, we can already see how the physical effects of hockey can augment Luffy's Devil Fruit, but all forms of hockey are still willpower. Feel like Devil Fruit users clash wills with their fruits to advance their powers. That was another interesting thing that I talked about, or uh, that I talked with somebody about recently. How, how you know, Luffy's body is rubber, right? Throughout the story, supposedly. And it's like, well, it's pretty consistent, right? It doesn't change its nature in any way. And so you wonder what the effect of willpower on that, like Luffy knowing that his fruit is rubber or believing that to be true made his body rubber, but then maybe there's, you know, like his, his will to win fights has sort of overcome that where you see slight variations in the power. Like for instance, when Kaido mentions like, rubber can't do that, you know, with right. Snake yeah. Man. It's like it's like Luffy's willpower, sort of ignoring the limitations of his devil fruit previously. It's like in order to win, look, this is what my fruit could actually do. And so once you actually realize it, the potential there from that point is is sky high. I think. Savage. I am totally with you on that. Shout out to the 500 people in here. Thank you for being here, guys. Um, now, I'm I'm sort of of the belief now that the reason that Luffy is able to stretch and, and move his body in this in this way is basically because uh he has all of this resin liquid latex inside of him and he's actually just manipulating that and it is stretching his body so i think for the it if we ever get this explanation it would make sense if he's just producing the resin in the same way that like like i said mr three produces wax katakuri produces mochi but it, it expels right Luffy hasn't figured out how to, uh, and this goes back to the archipelago as well, he hasn't figured out how to make the tree breathe. He hasn't figured out how to make his arms breathe. The, the, the ground of the archipelago just breathes and then the bubbles emerge. So once Luffy figures out the breath of his, of his fruit, I think he'll be able to expel these, uh, you know, these bubbles, this resin and everything like that. But I'm hoping that I, I mean, I've been waiting for this since Annie's Lobby, and I bring this up a lot in the community, but I've been waiting for Luffy to, you know, use his power to turn himself into a giant, to just produce enough resin within himself and and now harden it, you know, and then he's a giant. I, I need the gigantification in the story to apply to Luffy. Hope so. You know, I guess right now all we need is, like, the right villain for that, you know, because I, I doubt that he's going to go Godzilla on, like, the Grosse, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, I could see him grabbing a giant dragon out of the sky as a giant. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, is that is that a prediction? I hey, Everything's a prediction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me let me run through uh, some super chats real quick. Uh, Lucy B said, whatever theory we come up with, Oda will still surprise us all. That's why I love... Oda, you know, one of my favorite, you know, things I say on the channel is, uh, I, I love it when I'm, when I'm right. I love it even more when I'm wrong. Oda, surprise me. Surprise me, Oda. <laughs> uh, Lucy said, Joy Boy, do you think there's a water devil fruit? Uh, no. 
I don't think so. But there could be things that are very close to it. I think that Oda can probably break that and get away Ooh. with it. We got a big super chat from one of the channel goats here. Shout out to my guy, Ty. He said, Sorry, I'm late, Captain. I always tell you, man, you're always on time. <laughs> but that's his quote. Uh, I watch tons of reviewers, and the Yonkos of YouTube all possess a heightened attribute. Joy Boy is a writer. Savage. Insights he shares has me dying to read his work. Hope your dad's doing better, man. Ranger tickets for all the Savage crew, and you're added to the list, JB. So, my guy oh, Ty, man, he works you. for the Rangers. Savage. You want to get Rangers tickets? He's... <laughs> That's, no, that, I, that's... I live in Texas. I live in Texas too. So you know, he's, like, he's in I, Texas. I really Ty, link that. up with Joy Boy. You know, get those, get those tickets, man. Get those <laughs> seats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I really, I really like talking about that though. I know that's not necessarily on on topic, but I like thinking about how all the YouTubers or like personalities in the community fit into their their niche. I think that that's fascinating. And you can see, and I, I love this, you know, it's like, as it, you know, if I wasn't here as, as just a person who enjoys one piece, you can find the right person that sort of embodies the things that you get out of the series. And so, you know, he's talking about me, me writing, I've been writing my book now for a year, and this has been really fun and Savage. also a challenge because, you know, it's, uh, I didn't know as well, but as I've done that, it's sort of incorporated in my channel as well. It's, it's definitely one of the things that I'm most proud of, you know, to share my sort of discoveries, not only about the story of One Piece, but a, but seeing things from a different lens that I didn't before. And I, you know, I feel like this is an appropriate conversation with you too, because I haven't actually talked to you about this, but you got like Writer's Guild on your Twitter. It's like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, big timer, you know, that's, <laughs> but um, yeah, but yeah, no, I appreciate yeah. that tie so much. Yeah, no, I, and I, I, you know, even when um, uh, Ragnar was here, he was talking your book up because I, I guess he's read some of it. You've been sharing some stuff with him, going over that with him. Yeah, no, I'm bouncing. I what I what or I so, want something. ideally. Yeah, what, what I want ideally, what, you know, I, I am reading it with Ragnar. Is um, I know that some of the not everyone, but but I look up to Brandon Sanderson in particular because that's. Um, currently my favorite fantasy series is a fantasy book he has a writing group of course he has an official writing group as in they all went to college for it so there's five or six people that you know there's they know what the hell they're doing but, you know those extra perspectives help alpha readers essentially you know what i mean and ragnar I, you know i maybe people i'm sure a lot of people know about ragnar ragnar is the ultimate idea man like he revels in the idea of ideas. <laughs> so, you know, but yeah, me and yeah, but absolutely. But I hope that um, when it gets finished and it will get finished, it's, it's going a little bit slower, but you know, I'm just slow in general. This is true in, in all things. I think about things a lot, but um, you know, when it gets done, man, I hope that, that everybody gives it a shot to go at least try and read it. And I promise you that at the very least, it'll be as good as I can possibly make it. <laughs> and that's, and that's awesome, man. You know, and that's, that's, I think, I think that's a great thing. I think that your uh, your community, I'm sure, will will gravitate to it, and it's it's a great way to you know use your pa your platform to you know like get get what you you know what you you want out of life. Like if you're if you're trying to write, man, that's you know it, well you are you're literally doing it, and that's the that's the biggest step to it. So I'm excited for it, and um, you know I definitely want to know when it's all. When it's all ready and 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 done. Well, you better believe, man. That's <laughs> that's what we call free advertisement. If you like it, free advertisement, not opportunity, not wasted. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see a couple of these super chats. Um, uh, Emil Diaz, member for eleven months, said, "Could he transform the island into resin as well?" Uh, I'm I'm thinking that it's it's possible. I mean, I'm I really want size manipulation to factor into Luffy. Like, I don't I don't know if it's gonna happen, but. I, I'm just stuck on this gigantification thing, you know, it just, it's so prevalent with so many people, Vegapunk, the Gorsei, 
you know, Big Mom, like everything, like it has to play a role. And if, if this fruit is able to alter the size of things, like if Zunisha was a regular sized elephant at some point, but Joy Boy was able to balloon it into a giant elephant, like that's something that, that's something that just makes me think, okay, now we're dealing with a very dangerous fruit. I think that's a big question right now. How do how do you make the fruit legendary? You know, I mean, we can see how it could be powerful individually, but legendary. That's what we're. That's the next step. Yeah, I mean, that's why you know, with this resin thing, I'm really on the idea that it defies all of the. It defies the water curse. If you know how to use it, you'll be able to. You'll be the freest man on the seas, because you can go underwater, and as we've seen in Sabaody, you can also go into the sky with it with the bubbles. So. Um, Bike Vanilla said, here's some tax refund money for the most savage YouTuber, uh, but you can only spend it on drip. <laughs> All right. <laughs> savage. Uh, Magdeal said, love you guys. Keep the theory videos coming. Tell me how I bought a cheap dying bonsai tree from Home Depot to keep it from dying, and it turns out it was a rubber tree. The universe is talking. See, there, it, it, one piece is in all things. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Red Comet 369 this stream is a dream come true. This is all caps, my guy. Always with the caps. Love it. Thank you, Captain Randy, Detroit, and Joy Boy, the two best prognosticators who trust Oda's creative direction and source manga. Hashtag Savage Pirates for Life. Um, let's see. Oh, lost the stuff here. The Last Orphan. If you've read or seen Yu Yu Hakusho, do you think we are about to see Oda's spin on Yusuke versus Sensui feels pretty similar to me. Uh, I'm in the middle of a rewatch of Yu Yu, and um, so, and I'm only at the, uh, I just fi I finished Dark Tournament, and then I've kind of stopped. I, I need to, I need to get back into further with it. Um, because I don't even, I honestly don't even remember the Yusuke versus Sensui fight, because I was like, I don't know, 12 or 13 when I was first watching the series. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like nine yeah fun fact on that actually uh that played back in the day on uh, adult swim yeah and i didn't know if i could watch adult swim so anytime my dad went out you know to go do something i would go into his room and turn on the tv and go to adult swim to go watch and at the time that w what was on was yu yu Hakusho. and i was i felt so rebellious at the time <laughs> <laughs> i remember the very first adult swim i remember staying up watching it they had cowboy bebop there and um uh, a bunch of other stuff it is pretty sure they had home movies aqua teen hunger force it was a good time you know, because I was like, I was, I was entering my teenage years, and I wanted something that was just a little. Trigun. Yeah, Trigun, Trigun, big, big O. Yeah, that was all part of the original lineup. Yeah, we're taking it back. Man. Yep. Uh huh. It. Yep. I'm telling you. All kids out of the pool. Um, let's see, Grizzly Adams said people have been talking about vulcanization for years, but seem to overlook the perfect opponent for that to finally happen against a Kainu. See, what I want to see happen now with Akainu is if Luffy is able to, you know, basically turn himself into a giant toy also by creating this resin and hardening it, uh, I think it would be as effective as Mr. Three was against Magellan. So I think that it will, Luffy will be able to harden his hand and be able to punch Akainu's lava and just continually, like, drop that if it melts or whatever and and he's not going to be able to to actually get any physical damage I feel about blackbeard though you know because blackbeard has negates the fruit powers so you think hockey alone is going to be difference maker there for luffy or well i mean i th i think that the the best aspect of that is that all of this is to grow his devil fruit to grow his abilities to grow his hockey but when he fights Blackbeard, he's going to have to throw that all out of the window, and it's really just going to come down to how strong has Luffy become, Seven. and it's just going to be fists against fists. So, um, earthquakes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Fists against fists. Little one-sided. Yeah. <laughs> so. Savage. Um. Maxo said another little theory. Maybe this resin fruit. Helped him handle slash expel the poison from his body and impel down. Um, that's uh, that, that's probably a, a pretty good segue 
because now that I have you here, one of the you know one of the big things that I wanted to get into, I was actually going to hit you up after the Grim Reaper um, chapter. You know, I was like, I I want to talk to Joy Boy about this. You know, because I talk a lot about um, you know the the different aspects of uh, I, I get into a lot of the mythology around it, and um, I know that uh, you're a very uh, you know you're a big proponent of hashtag ghost piece and the idea that you know the the fire festival is all of uh, you know, I mean I, I'll, I'll let you you know dictate your own thing about this uh, but there I think there's a lot of stuff to be said uh, just about uh, mythology Shintoism Buddhism uh, you know even uh, Christianity, Catholicism, and just religion within One Piece that's all kind of culminating into this idea of the underworld, the Grim Reaper. And I was thinking about this very specific scene that Maxo brought up about, you know, expelling the poison. And, I mean, you know, maybe I'm off base here, but, I, you know, when I was thinking about all of the religious stuff that's in One Piece, like we even have Kuma holding a, a Bible, Mihawk has a cross, right? We have 3D, 2Y, you know, and in messianic religions you know they the story of jesus he dies for for the sins of uh you know of of, of his people gets put into a cave and then three days later he is risen right but in specifically in impel down when that magellan fight happened that was on the second day after being flown by kuma right and then here he comes out of this cave on the third day after you know <laughs> you know after basically nearly dying to magellan and I, I i just think that that's one of those things that oda had to have put in there as a cheeky thing and it ties well, into you know the... go ahead man. go ahead sorry no 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 yeah, like no, i, I like... take over man talk about ghost yeah, piece yeah bro. yeah yeah um, so, you know, it's, you're thinking about it sort of in religious terms and, and I feel like they're very appropriate, but to e even turn it into story terms, you know, the hero's journey, right? That's what yeah. a lot of these, these mythos, they, they share certain things and there's lots of literature about that. It's, it's the hero's journey. Um, and it's one of those things where Oda's kind of obvious about it, that One Piece is, you know, it follows very closely the hero's journey. Luffy acknowledge it you know he's not a hero he won't share his meat but he is that's his story his story is the hero is the story of the hero um and so you can see throughout the story like joseph campbell's um a man of a thousand faces um there's one piece is designed with this in mind probably to a level that i'm not familiar with other than like star wars you know in terms of of how closely it follows when you look at all the steps of of and obviously not all stories have to share these steps or whatever, but One Piece has a lot of them. And in, in some cases, I think that they repeat, so it's a little bit convoluted, but you can absolutely see them. Like, you know, you head out into, you know, Sorry. the new world, right? For the first time, it's crossing, it's crossing the first threshold is what it is, which is, you know, we, we've gone out into the world of the unknown, the magic, where you don't know the rules of this place. You know, and then the first thing that Luffy does is he goes into the belly of the whale, which is yet another step, which is a metaphor that Joseph Campbell, you know, it's, it, it, it means things under the surface. But in one piece, it's quite literal. You know, they literally go into the belly of the whale, the belly of, of Laboon. And so speaking of, you know, to get this on track to, to ghost piece, and you know this through religion, through stories of heroes, going to the underworld, visiting the underworld is one of the most common things probably the most common thing that dante's happens in inferno these. is just impel down and you can see that with impel down it's not literal in that case yeah well it's never right, I, it's, it's never thinking. it's never literal <laughs> oh yeah no right. people well, have could, been talking well, about could. the chickens and stuff it doesn't matter <laughs> bad. yeah it is what it is it is right. what it is it bothers me damn it but okay um but no so you know, but but Impel Down is not literal. You know, it's like it's figurative. This is place isn't actually hell, but it's it's hell. You know, but you could you could. You know, I'm not saying that it will, but Oda could take it that far. We know that the the underworld is a place that actually exists. Brooke has visited there. Exactly. Um, he he's confirmed its existence, and now he's just like, okay, well, you're starting to get into some of the the big philosophical religious concepts of the one piece world that seem 
actually exist like if when someone dies what happens to them you know and this relates to a lot of other things that Oda's hinted at like the will of d inherited will things of that nature but you know it's like it's like well brooke died and then came back so his soul visited a place and then we have an arc here in in wano where you know, at first when it's introduced you're not sure what Oda's going to make of it but as you get further along it's like wait a second the fire festival is a festival to communicate with the dead that's the point and so as they send their little lanterns up I, I i hope we're really close i hope i'm right also hope that it's even better than i expect but you know it's like like you kind of expect a payoff at some point in time you know we've devoted all this time to it they're sending lanterns up they hope that their their wishes their dreams their wills reach their ancestors what i'm looking for is some kind of confirmation you know it's like it can be taken in a lot of different ways but i just hoped by the conclusion of this we we learn that those people that died in wano and and people close to the main character of the story because all the flashbacks people die we we learn learn that they're listening and they're watching that's like if it can be break, broken down into like like the simplest terms that's what it is but like the creative aspect of that it could be so many things and i'm really excited about that but you know i know has been teasing it i mean i could talk i literally made a video that is over an hour and i had to cut <laughs> a lot of stuff because there's just if this is true the whole arc is foreshadowing like things like kokeshi dolls like why are K kokeshi dolls in the story so much more could be taken from it you know why did oda decide to include this oh well, the the lore on the kokeshi well, my doll big thing is that is... it's no go ahead yeah, the lore on the Kokeshi, ah, the Kokeshi dolls is that it relates to the souls of deceased children. You know, that's one of the theories that you know, it, the lore is about what those things are, what it could be. You know, and then you have Odin appear multiple times as if Oda's saying, ah, you know, ah, maybe. <laughs> right. Are we going to get the real Odin? So. Are we going to get the real Odin? And the other the other part of this that I that I really like is things like Yamato, you know, Yamato wants to become Odin, right? Yeah. But like, you know, you know, things like, like possession, we, you know, it's a conversation right now with Joy Boy. I'm not sure if that's the same thing, but, um, you know, it's like, like, would, is it possible that someone like Yamato or anybody really, or that she knows that Odin's going to appear? Basically, he's dead, right? But she's read his journal and she knows that he's going to appear again and she wants to be person she wants to be odin when he appears it's like that you know it's like that's that's the only way currently that i really see yamato paying off that's interesting you know and i i had a comment that um you know brought up the line you know i'm not gonna die partner and it's you know it's this this whole idea of like is is there going to be some aspect of you know, return of these characters as spirits in, in some way. I mean, there's been a theory for years that, like, you know, when Luffy gets the laugh tail, he's going to be able to have a conversation with the spirit of Roger or something like that. Now, I don't necessarily know if I want to buy into all of it, but, you know, there are there there are mythological applications to this stuff. And I, I really go into this because, and, and I, I've been talking about it for a while, and I really just need to make the video, but I know that if I make the video, the video is going to be over an hour long. Talking about, and it's going to be a lot of work, but, like, talking about every mythological application and, like, like reference in Wano, I mean, there there's just, there's so many. But lately, a lot of stuff has been pointing to, you know, just the, the creation of the main Shinto deities, right? And it starts with... Izanagi and Izanami and Izanagi and Izanami were two gods that basically created all of the other kami and like everything that that Savage. comes about in Shintoism and Izanami gives birth to a uh, to a fire uh, kami shrivels up dies I mean it could be a reference to uh, Rouge giving birth to Ace in a sort of way as well but more than anything, she goes to the underworld, and Izanagi goes down there to find Izanami. And when he when he finally meets her, she is uh, she's basically a zombie, for lack of a better words. Like she's covered in maggots and all this stuff, and she's trying to keep him in the underworld. And it's it's not a good thing. He leaves. He locks the cave behind. 
She says she's going to kill a thousand people a day. He says, I'm going to make a, a, a thousand five hundred people a day. He goes and like he relaxes in the spring after having that, you know, terrible, uh, you know, thing. He thought he was going to bring his his wife back. So he wipes his face from his left eye, you know, comes one god. I don't remember specifically which is which, but, you know, from his right eye comes another. And then from his nose comes another. I, I, I remember the nose is Susanoo. Susanoo is the god of storms and seas. The D will surely cause another storm. Luffy wants to become the king of the seas, <laughs> you know, so it's like, it seems like he's an avatar for Susanoo. Amaterasu is the, the goddess of the sun and the dawn. And then you have Sukuyomi, who is the, the god of the moon, right? And I think that there is some parallels there with Momonosuke. Uh, Yamato was literally kept in Ama, uh, Amanoawato Cave, which is a cave that in Shintoism belief, like Amaterasu, gets mad at Susanoo after an argument that they have. Uh, you know, it's deeper than that. But, uh, and then she locks herself away for years, and the world sort of starts to crumble until they're able to... Uh, trick her out of the cave with a mirror that there's a there's a, a goddess that's you know better than you and then she comes out and they lock the cave now so i think that amaterasu in some cases is an example of yamato and that whole mirror thing could eventually become a parallel that oda's trying to draw which i'm fully expecting where it's like you don't need to be odin right and that mirror thing could be sim as simple as yamato seeing Momonosuke in his non-dragon form now a literal avatar of Odin because Shinobu basically said he looks exactly like Odin. So if there already is an Odin, then Yamato won't need to be Odin and they'll be able to be their own character. Now, if what you're saying about Odin coming back to life, uh, well, not, not coming back to life, but the spirit arriving here in the same way that this could be a Joy Boy possession in Luffy, uh, then... There could be a moment where the real Odin before, you know, going back to the underworld or anything like that says, you don't need to be me, just be you. And then we, can, we can get that growth for Yamato. And I think that, that something along those lines has to happen before Yamato joins the crew. Yeah, well, you know, the main thing that I want to take out is, is the... the you know, I, I pay attention to when Oda is absurdly creative, right? I, I tend to find that that absurdly creative things don't happen unless it is important to the story, like things that wouldn't occur to other people. Um, and so Yamato wanting to become Odin is one of those things. Now, that doesn't mean that it has to happen, right? Whether Yamato becomes Odin or anyone else, but something from that concept needs to be used. And it works just the same as if Yamato knows in the journal, like, hey, Odin's supposed to appear, but it's not Odin. It's Momonosuke. It works just as fine. But as long as something yeah. comes from it, the payoff there incredible and of course with with momo's story you know he's just fighting constantly with how he views his father and how he views himself and i think that when we go back and we reread the arc after it's done you're going to see that a lot of the things that momonosuke believes and a lot of the things that he says is actually what what odin would say of course that there may be different confidence levels there may be a different ability levels but you know it's it he was talking about like, well, I'm, is it make me a coward if I just want to save everyone? And I think about Odin dancing for, you know, throwing away his pride for years just to save people, you know? And so there's there's so much that can be brought to the surface from there. I know. Oh, yeah. No, I, I and, and, and that's, Momonosuke is a character that was not well liked for many years. And I, I finally think that the community is starting to turn around on Momonosuke, and, and it's, uh, it's necessary because uh, Momonosuke, in, in my mind, is, there's not a shred of doubt that they got on the ship at the end of this and, and travel with the Straw Hats. So, I hope so. Yeah. You know, I, my, my theory on this, just to interject for a second, by all means. that I've been running with for a long time, shout out to my good friend Roger, um, but uh, he... Um, the idea is is that that Luffy's crew is going to reflect Roger's crew, and so Odin joined Roger's crew along with his wife and two retainers. Um, and so you have Momonosuke, Tama as an eight-year-old, just the same as Momonosuke. Of course, we're now curious about their ages, right? So I don't want to really get into that at all. Well, but, I, I, you and, know, and ju just to jump in there, you know, I've been with I've been Tama for Nakama for 
a very, very, very long time. So I'm right with you, you on there. So we're on the we're we're on the same wavelength. So we got Momo and Tama, in game couple, power couple. <laughs> and then we have once Momo is aged Japan. down again. Once Momo's aged down again, just to, just to, we're not just we're to, not talking about this, okay? <laughs> in a not weird way, yeah. <laughs> Somehow make it happen. Um, and then the retainers, right? Yamato can be a retainer. Um, and if and, yeah. and, you know, for me personally, and this is just my perspective, I want or I shouldn't say want. I believe Momonosuke is going to be in the crew before Yamato. If I had to rank them, like you had to choose. I would choose Momonosuke first. I think Momonosuke is more vital than Yamato is. I think Yamato could could join in other capacities as her own captain, potentially, or Grand Fleet, or whatever. Uh, so Momonosuke is first. So you have Momonosuke. If Yamato can't be a retainer, then I don't think it's going to be... Yamato is going to join. But as it ha stands now, I could imagine Yamato as a retainer, and then I imagine Carrot. But then... Yeah everyone's theories basically come true. Oda's like, hey, you wanted this? You know, every <laughs> carrot for Nakama, Yamato for Nakama, Momonosuke for, for Oda Nakama, just becomes Oprah. Just, just all of them, you know? And uh, I know that people have some problems with this because they're like, oh, there's already so many Straw Hats and how can they, you know, he make, how can he handle all of that? First off, there's not too much journey left. And, and second off, of course, Oda can do it. You know, like, totally. or at least I believe that he can. Totally. And, and the, but the thing is too, is like, Momonosuke is, in my mind, already a member of the crew. He's been with us for, a, like, a, a decade, you know? Maybe longer. You know, he's been so prevalent in the story. He's ridden on the ship, and he has had meaningful interactions with the members of the crew that are necessary. So, and that's that's a big thing for me. Like, have you spent enough time, story-wise, with everybody or just about everybody? And right now, Momo checks all of that boxes, uh, all of those boxes, because he's he's been with everybody. Uh, Tama is the second place for that because Tama was so prevalent at the beginning of this arc, which was Tama's been with us for I don't know what like four years now, basically. So like they they've been in they've been relevant in the story. Um, but I think Zoro, and I say this a lot, Zoro is a key person that you need to like have some meaningful interactions with which is what has me sort of iffy about carrot because from you know just speaking from story and, and and everything like that yes carrot was super relevant in whole cake island but then once wano started you know it's like let's take this to high school right everybody's got their little tables and all of that the straw hats sit over here you know these people sit over here these people sit over here carrot got to wano and then went and sat at the mink table and didn't go and sit with the Straw Hats. She stayed with Wanda, she stayed with Inurashi, she started doing all of these other things that were not relevant to the Straw Hats. She did not take place in like the Resetsu Town battle, you know, after Yasui, which would have been a big moment for me, like, oh, carrots with the Straw Hats. So I'm not opposed to it. I'm not saying, like if Oda puts Carrot on the squad, like fine, I know that he's going to give us those moments, but Carrot has done nothing to have any time with anybody that she didn't go to Whole Cake Island with. Like, there's been it's no... Do, yeah. It's do or die, right? For for people who are backing that idea. I mean, no, and we, we said this earlier, right? Or, uh, I mean, pretty much everyone did. Carrot went from, like, okay, she's in Whole Cake Island, she's a special mink, to where is Carrot? Um, that's just reality. I, I You know, I can, I can twist it in some ways, because I do Karen? like the... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> who is this person? Uh, but you know, so yeah, I can twist it in some ways and and, and try and and justify it. But at the end of the day, story time is what's going to pay off most for her. Yeah, you know, I do like the end game. Uh, you know, it's like Jimbei, right? Jimbei sort of represents the fishmen as a whole. Their variant of you're talking about mink representation the on the group. society. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and Kara doesn't scream to me like some. Sometimes, like Tentata, for instance, it's it's Grand Fleet Giants. You have Hydrogen, right? So they yeah. sort of that's where they get their place. But who's going to be for the Minks? I think that personally, Nekomushi and Inurashi die, which makes uh, Wanda probably at, at least the new one of them. I, I think that one of them will die. I, I've been I've been Team Inuarashi is going to die so that because there's this there's this thing that's set up in Zo you know there's the leader of the night there's the leader of the day the king of the day king of the night you get rid of one of that then you have this meaningful transition you know of uh, Nekomamashi being you know the ruler of the night having to take over the dawn and the morning for Inuarashi I think there's a stronger theme there Nekomamashi stays make, make me tear up. 
<laughs> I, I, like that's one of those things where you think about it and you're like oh man don't do that don't do the fred and george thing man come on <laughs> <laughs> that's the way but no I no it. i see that yeah. yeah no with carrot you know it's, it's just it's just time for you know, her to do something but i definitely do like the idea of her representing pedro pedro saw that the straw hats believed that the straw hats were going to be the one to create the dawn and so the story has deviated from that uh, quite a bit and i think that's in large part due to carrot's anger at pedro being gone and who she's blamed for it and so she needs to grow up uh, put simply i yeah. think where you know understand that this is the world of pirates i mean if she talked to luffy luffy would say well he was free he did what he wanted to do he knew the dangers uh and you know this is a fight to the death that's what it's like here and yes you can be sad for him but you know understand that he he wouldn't want you to to you know go out in, in vengeance what he wants is to achieve the dawn so that's what you need to be focused on how can you help you know create the world that he envisioned um, so if we start getting that story fleshed out then maybe it looks a little bit more possible again. but it's been a while yeah uh let me get into some of these uh, uh super chats that were missed uh brandon king said uh, aside from kaido and rocks which flashbacks are you most intrigued by he said i want to see kainu's but also bonnie and kuma's sorbet backstory any any flashbacks that you're waiting for all of them all of the flashbacks are good kaido obviously um <laughs> i want all rocks I mean, anything to do with rocks. I'm just my my butthole is puckered for that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I'm with you. Uh, yeah, let's throw it out there. Yeah, uh, Emil Diaz said, uh, "JB, I always loved your Kaido as a dragon who ate an Oni fruit theory. In the end, it turned it out to be the other way around. And Oni this is not my. Fruit. That is not. That was not my theory. Actually, my theory is uh, well. First off, way back in the day, I think it was all. Australopithecus. That didn't come out right, but he was the first one who really compiled the whole Kaido is a dragon theory for the community that really popped off. And so that's when it was, was like obvious self in such third amounts. You can be pretty sure that you're somewhat close to the truth. Um, and so I turned that. I didn't. I, it wasn't Oni theory. I can't actually remember exactly what I said, but I twisted that where Kaido was a a dragon who didn't eat an Oni fruit, but rather could naturally shape shift into human form because that's in in mythology that's that's pretty common. You play a game like Fire Emblem, right? And you have um, you know they transform from human form to dragon form. I think that was my idea. But True. Yeah, I, I I haven't seen the second season of The Witcher, but I mean I remember in the first season there were those dragon hmm. people that turned into people. Um, let's see, Jonathan R.K. said, unfortunately, this time, that time, was a bad time for me to tune in, but can't wait to watch the VOD later. Shout out to Troy Boy and Joy Boy. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I realized in the Discord that, uh, you know, Daylight Savings also was kind of mess people up, uh, you know, with the, even the normal stream time that I do. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're utilizing our time. We're getting, we're getting a lot of time here. PXPX said... Gorosei are scared of Kaido's Fruit Awakening if Luffy pushed him to the limit. Uh, why else did Vegapunk experiment and clone the fruit? Oda's trolling. Nah, no, nah, I'm I'm 100% on it's always been the Gomu Gomu no Mi that, they, that they're worried about, or the Juicy Juicy no Mi, or, or, or anything like that. Um. About 50-50, I would say. I can still see, to me, the Kaido being the, the fruit that the Gorosei mentioned is a lot cleaner. That doesn't mean that it's more likely. It's, you know, sometimes I find the simplest answer is the right answer. And Oda also does a I've terrific job of distracting us, you know, so where, where, where you get the panel and it's like, oh, everyone thinks Kaido. They're not even thinking about the Gomu Gomu no Mi. I, I mean, some people did, but, you know, a lot of people weren't. And then you eventually get back to it with some complications along the road. That doesn't mean that Luffy doesn't have a different, different fruit. That doesn't mean that there aren't things about this that are incredibly relevant to Luffy, but maybe it isn't, you know, we talked before, like the thing that we're missing is make Luffy's fruit legendary, something that is worthy of, of changing its name, you know? And so you can take that out and still have a lot of cool things. I think context is key I'm because 50, they, 50. Uh, in that scene, it was at 1037, they, um, they start their conversation before we're 
you know, sandwiched in between images of Zunisha, right, where everybody thought it was Zunisha. I was like, no, that's the mis that's the misdirection right there is the Zunisha part. But they're talking about capturing Robin, and then they, you know, they're talking about the Straw Hats, and then they start talking about, you know, the Fruit Awakening. So I'm thinking the line of thinking is staying within uh, the Straw Hats there. See. See, you made a very important, you know, and this is just, you know, like digging into people's minds to see how they perceive you. You believe that it's possible that Luffy's fruit is responsible for Zunisha. And immediately, if that's true, we don't know that it's true. But if you assume it's true, then then all of that just fits so much. You know, it's so much more satisfying because it's not just, oh, we're going to throw in Zunisha just to get him off the trail. No, it actually oh, no. relates in a because really this, surprising this is actually, way. Because this is actually, this is what they're talking about is what could would create it this yeah so yeah it's that's it's just not a thought that it ever existed in my it's not a thought that existed in my mind you know so immediately say that and i'll, I'll ponder over this in the next couple of days and you might have convinced me you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> uh dawn knight 1993 said uh what do you admire about other theorists uh also what's one theory you're working on and tease question for both of you literally favorite youtubers right here uh anything you want to uh, throw out there uh, we're at the part of the arc where I feel like all the theories for the arc itself are going to be wrapping up. So things yeah. like Ghost Piece is obviously the biggest theory that I have left. You can get into really specific things like Momonos, e even things like Momonos looking like Odin, I guess, technically is a theory. But, you know, we're just in the sit and wait and enjoy fade, I feel like. Um, and as far as in-game stuff, I'm not ready for that yet. You know, we're going to... Once we get to the end of the battle, I'll reevaluate where I feel like from, you know, where do we jump off next? Do we go to Albev? What about Sabo? Those sorts of things. Well, I'm, I'm not in the mood or I'm not prepared right now to, to delve into those things. Yeah. Everything for me right now is making sure that each individual uh, character storyline and everything is just buttoned up and wrapped up in a satisfying way. Um, you know, so it's, it's just getting us to that close because it's for me, everything was on this roller coaster up until they beat Big Mom. When they beat Big Mom, we started this roller coaster down. Everything shifted. Now everybody's the next chapter. Right after that, everybody was trying to figure out how do we get off of Onikashima. The conversations changed in a radical way, and that's why we're you know we're heading towards the end game here. Um, but uh, what I admire about other theorists is, you know, what they what they bring to the table. It's what, you know, you were talking about earlier, Joy Boy. You know, like you're a writer, so you're looking at it from a from a structured perspective. More just, you know, he's looking at it from a from a different way as well. He's also trying to come from a from a structure, but he's but everybody always brings their own like different spin towards it. People have said, you know, my film perspective is interesting to them. Uh, everybody, you know, the community is. Uh, you know, big fans of Murphy now, who like reviews novels and has no basis in anime and manga. So everything is everybody brings their their own thing to the table. Some someone like Tekking is bringing that you know uh, vast knowledge of other animes and and mangas into what they're saying. Uh, shout out right. to um, uh, W's in the chat for Bobby Panamar, who said my two favorite theorists. Uh, what if Dripper Scarfano fed Luffy the Mera Mera? Ace made a promise to Wano. Sabo is theorized to have been assassinated. If this is true, now all three boys would finally get a reunion with Luffy and Joy Boy. Uh, I mean, that's a that's a crazy uh, thought, uh, and no. and I I I just I gotta say a say a no to that as well. Um, so, but Big no. Yeah, I I mean. Dripper, you know, and if you don't know Joy Boy, that's the that's my community's name for uh, Blue Scarf, is uh, Dripper Scarfano. So I, I gave I gave every CP Zero member their name and their own name because Oda refuses to. So I, I do not think that Dripper fed Luffy the 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 Mara Mara. I do not believe that Sabo is dead. But one thing that I do like about what this chapter uh, tells us and what it holds is that there's the possibility for, and even some foreshadowing in Dressrosa, for Sabo to communicate with Ace via souls being inside of Devil Fruits. So from that perspective, uh, the next time that Luffy and Sabo meet, you know, if Sabo has any sort of way to, you know, 
access that if that's what what's happening with Luffy and Joy Boy, that he's able to access Lu uh, Joy Boy, who was maybe fossilized within the resin of the fruit. You know, we're getting wacky. You know, let's, but you know, hey. No, no, I'm with you. I'm following. You know, it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. You know, let's get the, let's get the tinfoil hat. Throw what it is. You know, you know what time it is. Come on, it's about to be that time. Uh, and <laughs> you know, I would, I, I, I would, I, I'm, I'm waiting for that moment when Luffy goes to Sphinx Island and like has his moment with Ace's grave, you know, and you know, maybe that's an opportunity if Sabo is there as well, and they're all sort of reunited together there in a way. I think that there, I think that there will be a reunion, but not in any way. I, I truly believe that Luffy has Lunarian DNA in him and that's parts, partially why he's able to do Red Hawk and, and things like that. Um, I need an explanation for that. And while there are, you know, <laughs> things have come out where resin is flammable and all this other stuff, but how is that spark happening? You know, just a lot of things will get cleared up in the story if there's Lunarian DNA mixed in. Luffy, if, Sanji was spliced with Lunarian DNA, and that's why he's able to use Diablo Jean Bay. Then we're good. We're good. There's in <laughs> in universe explanations. We don't have to get too wacky. Um. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, uh, Marcus Taylor said. Uh, can I get you to say something positive about Moria? Now, is that to you, Joy Boy? Do you hate Moria or something? No. No. Oh, I like Moria. You know, Thriller Bark, for all the consternation, I've seen a lot of people, and you talked about Weekly, I've seen that before. You know, like, I enjoyed Thriller Bark. I also am, one of my favorite arcs probably is the Foxy arc. So it might say something I love it about too. the kind of story that I like. So I, I don't know. It, I, it was funny I, to me, and that works. I am a Davy Back defender, bro. All right, like, and and I and I read Davy Back Weekly. Like, I am a Davy Back defender. It has some of the greatest, some... like, like just interactions between the crew, and that's what I love. I love the crew being the crew. So, oh, you, 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 and you know, I think a lot of people look for like uh, importance to the arc. You know, like, why is this here? It just feels like filler. You know, outside of best filler possible in my opinion just in terms of character interactions and just being enjoyable week to week reading you know there's some in-game concepts there too like for instance what if the world of pirates in the past is important so now we learn of a game that they played and how that might tie into the world Precisely. you know i personally believe that that joy boy was a pirate back in the day and so he's out there playing davy back fights you know and so it relates and we don't know exactly how yet but We'll eventually get there. I am waiting for the Davy Back fight to return. You know, we, we, we get inversions of just about everything in the you know in the new world side of all of this, and a serious Davy Back, you know, is something that I want. A lot of people speculate that Rock's got his crew from Davy Backs. I am not. You know, I, I'm not really on that. I think it's more interesting if Rock's was actually a good guy going about things the wrong way, and like Luffy was able to draw these like big names to him. Because to me, having Whitebeard on your crew, having Big Mom on your crew, having all these other people is no different than Luffy having Zoro on his crew, Sanji on his crew, you know, like Jinbei on his crew. Like, it's the, sa it's the same thing to me. What I would love is if we have a Davy back against Blackbeard because he, he wants to use it to, to get Robin without them having to, you know, uh, basically scrap about it. <laughs> it's like, if I just win this, I'll get you know, Robin. You know, it's one of those things, I never want to bet it against Oda. I mean, this has probably been a reoccurring theme of the stream so far, but there's like sometimes where I'm impressed. It doesn't, it's not just one piece. It's a lot of stories where you see an idea um, and, and just think to yourself, like, how would I have written that? You know, is this like, was this intuitive? How they transform this idea at its most base level into something that it actually turned out to be. And so this is one of those examples of that. I think Morris made a theory as well about a Davy back fight in Elbaf with Shanks. And one of my problems is that I don't know how you can make, you can up the tension of a Davy back fight to the level that it needs to be to, some, to be incorporated into some in-game events. But that doesn't mean that it can't happen, you know? And, and it's a Davy like back against Shanks where, doesn't make sense to me because it just, it, the stakes aren't there. It's like as if it was against Foxy. Again. It can't. Oh, actually, I would right, say that right. I would say the Davy Back fight against Foxy would have more stakes than against <laughs> than against Shanks. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> well, especially at the end of the story, you know, they're, they're, you know, I, I, I like the goofiness uh, of One Piece, and I think that it has its place, but a whole arc, I think, Savage. which it would be versus a person like Shanks, probably. But just so you need a different tension, you need a different feeling from it. And I personally, I don't envy the task of trying to do that. But if it was done, you can like that's one of those things that I'd be excited for. Like as soon as you start to see that and be in it, that would be an impressive moment for me. Yeah, like I can't. Envy uh, I mean, imagine right? We get it's we're finally there. Luffy versus versus Blackbeard. The crew is standing up against everything we're fully expecting we're about to get one-on-ones against everybody the community's been speculating you know oh sanji, sanji versus pizarro lafitte versus brooke whatever it's about to happen and then blackbeard just pulls out three coins and is like nah buddy <laughs> like, like, like this is we're doing this and then luke remembers and he's just like all right, let's go. And now we're in the Blackbeard Davy back fight. Blackbeard was at the pirate <laughs> island too. He was right. at the, yeah, the exactly. pirate exactly. island. Exactly. Like there's so many ways Oda is going to zip. He's going to he's going to zig and zag, man. And I'm here for it all day. Um uh Lucy B asked, uh, "Joy Boy, do you think Shanks knew what kind of devil fruit he stole and which straw hat is your favorite?" Absolutely. Um, I mean, it's not a thing that has to be. There's a possibility that Shanks just knew the fruit was important. Uh, or just, I mean, there's a possibility that he just randomly encountered it. But I tend to think, I like the idea that Shanks been working, um, you know, scheming in the background, oh, making oh, definitely. things definitely. happen. Um, and so, you know, if this fruit is legendary, if, you know, there's no doubt in my mind, Shanks could have heard about it from through Roger or Rayleigh or whatever from the Poneglyphs. I mean, look at um, look at Rayleigh. Things. What has he been doing for years? Sitting on Saba Odi, taking the resin and putting it on ships. Like there is a connection here. There's a yeah. Connection. So that, that's where my that's where my mind is. Absolutely, I think that you know, I, I at least I want to believe that that Shanks is creating an environment suitable for the the new Pirate King to rise and for that person to find the one piece and turn the world upside down. So let me tell you my timeline for the way that I believe things, right? And, um, you know, shout out to Artur for putting the timeline together of things. Um, when Fisher Tiger went to Marjo, right? He frees the slaves. I think that is going to be revealed to be the time that a bunch of fruits went missing as well. Because within the next year is when Luffy got his fruit and Law got his. Two of about him, slaves. What's that? About slaves too. So, they we know that the, the celestial dragon just gave him willy nilly to slaves. So you free a bunch of slaves, just like Bo Hancock. Yep. You know? And oh, then and they die and then their fruits go into circulation. Exactly, exactly. So I think that the world government was on the hunt for the for the gomu gomu no mi jushi jushi no mi the sabao sabao no mi whatever and they finally got a hold of it but shanks knew that and then intercepted the ship with who's who on it and all of that took the fruit and maybe even had the intention of finding ace roger's son giving it to him but luffy ate it first and that's why he was on fusha island uh, fusha i mean that Rose. makes perfect sense to me Especially, you know, you have those low-key lines about Roger. You know, well, it, it couldn't be me, but it's going to be my son, you know? And then that's the thing that I feel like could be very influential on Shanks' perspective. And then we'll you go know, back I, to I, chapter I, one. We'll go back to chapter one, and we'll listen to different things that Luffy said and the reactions that Shanks had to those lines, you know? Go back to Saba Odi, and, you know, when he we get that little flashback of Shanks talking to Rayleigh, and it's just like he said everything that Roger said. So I couldn't, I, I you know, I wasn't going to, he already ate the fruit, but he was saying everything that Roger was saying. So he is. This is this is our joy boy. This is our this is our horse. I'm putting all of my chips on this. This There's bandit took him. Fate. Right, exactly. Destiny or fate. Shout out to Whoop Slap. Oh. Like I gave no, up she, my she, arm she, she, because this is the person Roger was waiting for. Right. Exactly. Well, I mean, you're Shanks, right? And you, you know, you're you're trying to. You have the fruit, and you're like, okay, like how do I? Savage. Ace, uh, you obviously Ace is obviously a prime one because of Roger, uh, but the things and uh, there comes a point in time where I think any reasonable person would be like, no, you know, this is this is too coincidental to ignore. That this is this is this, uh, the the universe is speaking to me. 
Yeah, that's, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> much for that. yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think I don't think that Shanks is a bad guy. I think he's he's manipulating oh. everything to factor into what exactly what Roger wanted, and he may be going about it in a different way. You know, like I also believe that Shanks could have come and saved Ace, but he didn't. He didn't step in until he probably found out that Luffy was there, and that. It, it didn't matter to him whether I, that Ace lived or died, and he was probably stopping Kaido from going there because it would lead to Ace continuing to be this potential uh, Joy Boy. And it's like, no, I we don't need we don't need all of these extra Joy Boys. I just need this one kid to do it. So well, and, could, and and there's probably I'm I mean I mean there's you know the, like the in game battle right. Um, I'm sure that it's prophesized to some extent that Shanks would know something about it. And I think that Shanks has been trying to avoid that until the conditions he feels like are right for the a person who, a candidate to rise above and sort of claim victory. Um, and so, you know, it's obviously at this point in time, a battle, you know, a huge world battle versus the, the Marines and Yonko, Whitebeard, and, and then maybe Kaido shows up. It's not going to be Ace and it's not going to be Luffy that are going to be winning this battle. They're not going to be the ones that sort of seize the reins of the world at that point in time. So you can't have a battle like that. And that's sort of how I rationalize it. Same thing with the Gorosei. You know, I think that a lot of people view the guy speaking to them in a cordial sense and You, you and cut out a second there, them. man. Um, let's see. Uh, you said you think the Gorosei and then, and then I lost you. Uh, yeah, with the Gorosei, you know, a lot of people think that the Gorosei are like, uh, and the government are, are inherently evil. But you have like details from the story where interesting dialogue choices, like for instance, in Robin's flashback in Ohara, where they order the, the buster call and they, they kill the scholars there. There's consternation on the face of the Gorosei, as if, you know, this is a thing that they're doing, but they don't want to do. You can look at the panels and be like, like no, this is, you know, I think a Gorosei actually puts his hand over his, his face, like, no, this isn't what we yeah, wanted. Yeah, basically. Gandhi goes say like this, yeah. All right. Um, and so, you know, it's just interesting where where uh, I think a lot of people assume that, sh that, that Shanks interacting with, with the Gorosei like this uh, implies that he might not be an ally, whereas I tend to think it's like, you know, so much more from the story that we obviously need, but it would be amazing if, you know, like, we see Roger fight rocks in God Valley. He protects celestial dragons Savage. for a reason that doesn't immediately make sense to us. You know what, like, why did he choose celestial dragons? over somebody like rocks. So I kind of hope in the, in the end game, right? We, we discover that that there was you know pirates on the side of the founders of the world government. And that probably the the ultimate fear that they had was not the government, although over time it's probably corrupted and further, especially from the nobles. The greatest fear, the Armageddon, the Ragnarok or whatever that is prophesized is, is prophesized to be started by someone like Blackbeard, a pirate, a pirate who totally destroys the world. Um, and so then you think about Shanks and his role trying to cultivate it. It's like we need to make sure that somebody like Luffy, the pirate king, to fight against this this world ending event is a good guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I you know, and it's. So this is something that I was, uh, you know, sort of thinking about when I was doing my reread of uh, uh, Saba Odi to get ready for the the video I've got coming out, you know, which get ready for that, guys. All of the foreshadowing of resin in the story and why the fruit is resin. But I was just thinking about the visual nature of it. We're introduced to this idea of resin. We're introduced to these bubbles, and I think that Luffy is going to be able to produce these sort of bubbles, and he's already visualized that he's seen it, so once he gets the idea, he's probably going to do it. Um, but one of the first things that Luffy does with the bubble is put it over his head like a celestial dragon, and then we're introduced to the celestial dragons. What if this was Joy Boy's thing? You know, and, and we have, you know, not to, not to get to Khalifa with it, right? But, I mean, we still have, you know... Miss Wednesday and, and Mach Vice, we have uh, Gladius and, and Mr. Five, Kuzan and Monet. Savage. This fruit could be an offshoot of 
you know, the awa awa no me, you know, creating bubbles and things like that. But what if this was a visual indicator of Joy Boy? And that the fact that they're whole, that the Celestial Dragons have these bubbles on their head is not even, you know, so much to not breathe the same air as everybody, but that it's an homage to Joy Boy. That the descendants of the creator, the creator was Joy Boy. These, he's, we're told that his resin abilities are able to create houses and things like that. And he brought together them. Are you, are you talking about like God status? Because I, I, this was actually a thought that occurred to me that I was going to ask you when you were bringing up Susano and, and, and you know you you were dropping a Wikipedia on us, um, you know it's like how do you see this playing in the story? Is it just an illusion? Is it just something like that? Is it are we actually going to see this as a creation story for One Piece? You think? I I mean I think I I think that the the possibilities for for anything are are here based on the way that we've seen the the structure of the story. And the way that Oda goes about writing it, he's drawing things from everything, even pop culture. But um, I think it would be interesting if the Celestial Dragons think that they are enacting Joy Boy's will in some sort of weird way. You know, and this is another interesting thing as well, is like Celestial Dragons. Why dragons? Why, why is their symbol the hoof of dragon? And... You know, you think about some of the theories that are going along right now with Kaido's fruit. Um, you know, what is the importance of the dragons in this, the world of One Piece as well? That's that's where my thoughts go. Well, we have the sun Was god. Was Boy a dragon? Is basically I'm saying. Uh, I mean, there's. I, I mean, I, I guess there's a there's a possibility for that as well. You know, I mean, there's there's things to be open for anything, but it's also I think, um, you know, there's a lot of wars that have happened over time that have been my god is better than your god you know so if you have the sun god which is trying to be eradicated right maybe the hoof of the dragon that the celestial dragons has is the symbol of their god and that the you know the whole because i you know it's not uh you know it's not like it's my idea but i mean like i truly believe that the void history is just that they're trying to hide the genocides and you know the atrocities that they committed to rebuild and reshape the world in in their own image so that's um you know that, that that's kind of the the way that we get with uh that that's sort of how we get to these sort of rationalizations and Oda's not afraid to talk about things that are hidden in history um i brought this up a couple of times you know one of the biggest atrocities in human history is the genocide in the congo which was over rubber like 15, 10 15 mm. million people slaughtered over rubber I mean, and it wouldn't surprise me so, um, let's uh, get into some uh, super chats real quick here. We got uh, Zalager said, Davy back seems like a good exit for someone like Kuzan. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Um, Simon DeBeef, whoops, lost it, uh, said, Fujitora has been foreshadowed to be from Wano, sa Sandals, Kimono, Katana. Do you agree? Could he become a sword member after seeing Luffy free his homeland? Um, I, I mean, I like the idea of Fujitora being from somewhere else, personally, because it, that would imply that the uh, the Marines went to Wano and recruited him because he was drafted, and we haven't seen him in any flashbacks, so I think he came from somewhere else. But him being a sword member is possible. It's possible, but he's also new to the Marines. So, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Shiny Crobat said, whenever Kuma sent off one of the straw hats, a tree resin bubble popped. If Luffy is resin, this could have been a huge indicator. There's so much foreshadowing. Like, everybody, go reread Sabo Odin. It's, waiting for you to break it down, man. <laughs> it's, 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 it's insane. Uh, and Fishman Island, too. Like, it's, it's not just Sabo Odin. Uh, Boss Cobra said, in One Piece Stampede, they were fighting on, uh... Uh, what the island they were fighting on was in a bubble on top of the knock upstream. Do you th do you think that's a hint to Laugh Tales location? Um, no, I, I don't necessarily. I, I mean, I don't want to take anything from Stampede because it's there's only really one element to that that was canon uh, in a sense. But I do think that Fishman Island, the bubble that it's in, was created by Joy Boy. Uh. Let's see. Barry Motivated said, shout out to Joy Boy and the Texas crew. 
Uh, since we're talking about Shanks, what do you think Roger told him that made him cry when they came back from Laugh Tale? Do we think it influenced his actions? Uh, I don't know about you, Joy Boy, but I, I think that um, I think it would be interesting if Shanks was responsible for whatever uh, Roger's illness was in some way. Like, Roger was saving Shanks and, and caught some sort of illness because he put his life on the line for Shanks to parallel Shanks saving Luffy, and Roger just came back and said, what I found there wasn't the cure. But, it, but it, yeah, it could also be really simple as well. Just simply, this is the end of my journey. It's the start of yours. You know, you're next. True. I think yeah. that could carry a lot of power depending on the, the wording. Yeah. Uh, Ian McLaughlin, appreciate you both. What are your thoughts that Zunisha's crime may be a Cain and Abel parallel, uh, meaning he would be connected to characters representing Adam and Eve somehow? That's interesting. It's interesting. Um, I do think that Zunisha's the crime is probably like trampling over the ancient kingdom by accident or, or, or by control or something, you know? <laughs> you know? No, I... I... Uh, the way I like to think about Zunisha, at least, you know, is like, it's really one of the difficulties of war, especially if you believe that you're fighting on, on the side of justice, is, is how far is it acceptable to go in order to change the world a better way? You know, how much, how much evil and destruction? And it, it's, a, it's a relevant question, I feel like, and maybe one that uh, influenced Zunisha or you know, whoever might have been controlling Zunisha. Like, like, to what level, w how many lives would you sacrifice in order to save your friend, for instance? True that. True, man. Yeah. Uh, Eb Moogie, have you read about the rubber people? The rubber people? Or the Olmec? Could be the inspiration for the Ancient Kingdom. Uh, no, I'm not familiar with this. The rubber people. The Olmec. Hmm. I'm getting into Legends of the Hidden Temple here. <laughs> uh... Blackon said uh, about Luffy using resin to coat ships. What if after he destroys Fisherman Island, coats the Noah and takes them to the surface? Uh, well, I mean, they're fishermen, so I, I don't necessarily think he needs to coat the Noah. But maybe, maybe that. I mean, uh, it depends on how well built the Noah was. They do say that a submarine wouldn't be able to survive the trek down, but somehow while it's down there, it's able to sustain its pressure. So. Maybe just an added element of uh, safety on its way up. Um, let's see. Um, now, uh, JB, I know you said that uh, you had to go at, at, at one, or you, you still good? Is there anything else you wanted to, to get into? Um, yeah, unfortunately, I got, I've got to go here pretty soon. But um, you know, this is this is it's so big, right? This chapter <laughs> it unloads a can of of kick ass discussion that cannot be contained within an hour and thirty minutes. No, uh, you know, I, I just did I just did a collab with Brago, uh, Archer Library of Ohara, and and um, Pervision, and that was two hours too. And I still feel like there's more. <laughs> <laughs> more that needs to be discussed so you know but unfortunately time does not allow yeah no exactly um but, but hey man you do these again man we, there's there's like i am ready for it you better believe it <laughs> yeah i try to keep them to break weeks because it's it's like if i did it every week i, I think it would get stale but doing it every break week and you know i think that that's more interesting we have a couple of chapters to talk about and um, that's that's what makes it uh, fun and interesting for me. But uh, man, you know we have um, let's see, we still have over 750 people here coming in for this. This was awesome. Uh, it's been um, it's been great talking to you, man. Uh, you know this is a long time uh, long time coming. People have wanted the the Troy Boy and Joy Boy connection here. <laughs> no, I can, I, I can see why people wanted it. You know, it, it's been tough for me over the past, I'd say, two years ago to keep up with what everybody is saying. Same. Um, like, just talking talking to you, it's, like, very, very obvious to me that uh, our our perspectives are very uh, cohesive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah. I can see how we might have, have shared followers. 
that would want us to collab. <laughs> yeah, man. No, I'm 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 excited, and if we get any more, um... oh, actually, before you go, real quick, what do you think is going on with Zoro? Oh man, that's a tough one. Um, well, I want them to actually visit the underworld. That's what I want. I, I want the Same. borders between the world of the living and the world of the dead to, to, to momentarily cross during the fire festival. Um, yeah. And at that point, you know, can you know, I, I think personally, after this last chapter, I think Luffy momentarily died, uh, you know, sort of reflected in, you know, you see him and then all of a sudden his, his heart is beating. I think that his heart starts beating, which means that his heart wasn't beating for a time. Um, and so, you know, with Zoro and with the potential spirits that they could interact with across the board, that's what I hope that we get to. I'm looking for an escalation from Thriller Bark is what I'm looking for. Like, like he got really close to death, but how do we take the same moment and make it even better? And that's, that's where my mind goes. Yeah, I want to see the underworld as well. I think it's an opportunity for Oda, you know, without making it cheesy to have... Uh, you know, a reaffirmation of Zoro's goals if he's able to, on the other side, have a conversation with Kuina. You know, like he he's like in this this other realm, what Brooke had seen you know, and has to work his way back or, you know, we have to take that trip to the underworld where Brooke was. You know, if Zoro is dead, Brooke could be, this could be the key moment for Brooke in the story where he, he he awakens and he opens that door so that we can we can do this we can deal with this and um it's big mom's fruit could be interesting as well although i'm not entirely sure she comes back at this point but you know that's another possibility just a soul fruit would work really well yeah i mean well she's she's definitely coming back and and oh yeah i'm coming back but you know yeah. in the short term <laughs> of course, Mother Carmel as well. If, if you want to take the Souls theory all the way, you know, you make this the resolution of Big Mom's arc with Mother Carmel. She finds out the truth, interactions with her family, other things as well. I think I think we're going to need pudding for that. I think she's going to have to put the, the, the memories back in her. Um, I, I, I mean, I love the idea of the CP0 guys being... Some, some kids that didn't get eaten and if mm -hmm. they had orphans a you know if they had a conversation like hey you know you know you ate mother caramel then we could have wrapped everything up in, in wano but since we didn't now i think we need to we need to have pudding play into into a role in another arc with big mom and then we can we can wrap up her individual story arc that's why she's not done that's why she's not dead it, it needed to happen um so there's Man, there's just there's there's so much that can happen, and um, I'm I'm excited for anything that we could possibly get from this underworld stuff, and that's why I think, hopefully, this is why I want uh, in, in 10:44. I don't even want to go back to Luffy, at all. I want to stay with what's happening downstairs. I want Kaido to just be, you know, I want to sit in this dread. I want to see other Straw Hats interactions and reactions to the fact that Luffy has died. And um, you know, maybe we go back to Frankie. We go back to Zoro, and you know. That's we just get this other crushing blow. Zoro is dead. Savage. Man, that would turn the community upside freaking down. Yeah. <laughs> Danity. Total insanity. At that point in time, if this chapter didn't crush you, that chapter will. <laughs> yeah. Cause Luffy's either coming back in a Cavendish and Hakaba situation, you know, where Joy Boy is taken over momentarily until we get Luffy back in charge. Um, but I think that this Zoro thing will stick until we, we can like actually bring him back somehow and uh, gotta be the king of hell first come back the king of hell yep <laughs> i'll tell you what um yeah king of the hell pain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're in texas come damn on. it bobby god damn god, it bobby god god dang it luffy <laughs> <laughs> That's a callback right there. Yeah. Um, last, uh, let's see, last Super Chat. Well, Joy Boy's here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Milo Cake said, glad I was able to catch part of this live. Quick fire questions before Joy Boy leaves. Sorry if it's been covered earlier. Thoughts on reincarnation, uh, relation between Joy Boy, Sun God, and Binks. Most excited for Vegapunk and Wano or the Kaido flashback? And that's a lot there. Um, handle that however you want, JB. Uh, incarnation yes uh binks luffy and joy boy same person 
and the, the I missed the rest. <laughs> uh, more, Chris, more, more excited for Vegapunk or Kaido's flashback? Punk. Yeah, and I, I hope he's on those ships because uh, we we can't. This is another. If uh, one thing's for sure, if Vegapunk isn't on those ships, Momo definitely joins because you can't have an interaction with Vegapunk if Momo is not present because uh, he's got to have a conversation with Momo, Sanji, and Frankie. Those are the three people Vegapunk is tied to in the crew. So we could wrap that up in Wano if he's on those ships. Potentially. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. But talking about Vegapunk, that adds another hour. Um. <laughs> <laughs> or more. <laughs> or, or more. Or more. Uh, so I'm going to... Uh, let's wrap... Uh, I'll, I'll keep the stream going and I'll talk to the chat for a little bit longer. But Joy Boy does have to, um, you know, get back to... Uh, uh, Texas things, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> gotta uh, go ride my horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, thanks again, man. Definitely want to do this again in the future. And um, oh, hold on one second here. What is this? Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, there was one other super chat from Zoe, who's a, a channel goat here. She said, "Joy Boy." I've followed you for almost 10 years uh, before finding Captain Randy. Uh, please say hi, Zoe. Joy Boy here. <laughs> hey, Zoe. Joy oh, Boy here. <laughs> there we go. Zoe got it. And hi, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Troy Boy here. So <laughs> we, we got. I definitely want to do this again. Hopefully, we get some more Underworld stuff and, and we can really dive into Ghost Piece even more. Everybody in the Hope chat. That happens. Your legends. <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody in the chat, let's say bye to Joy Boy. Let's thank our guest uh, for Theory for Theory this week. That was a lot of fun. I want to thank everybody for coming for Theory for Theory. I want to thank everybody for chatting in the in the post stream thing. Again, this stream is going to be on the second channel. The Joy Boy section will be uploaded as a separate VOD on this channel. All right. So if you want to go back and you want to see that Joy Boy section, just you know, you can watch it here. If it magically disappears, it's because it moved over, and you just you just gotta wait. All right. So, thanks for uh, thanks for the support, guys. And look out for the video that is going to come out hopefully tomorrow on all of the foreshadowing of resin in One Piece. I'm very excited for this. I feel very um, strongly about all of the findings that I've found to the point where it made me go like this is this is it. I felt. The same, you know, there's there's only a few theories where I've kind of sat and went, oh, and then like went to Chrissy and was like, this, 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 and this, and then we're both there like, so, and that's like Law and Sword, Thomas and Kurizumi, and uh, you know, how Vivi's gonna come back into the story, like that kind of stuff. So that's how I feel about this next, uh, all these next discoveries. But a lot of the stuff we did talk about during the stream, but there are going to be other things and it's easier to get all of that when you see the panels. So watch out for that. We've got a lot of content this weekend, okay? There's, we have this today, hopefully a video tomorrow if I can finish editing it. And then on Sunday, there's going to be something else that uh, is going to be announced. All right? So thanks, everybody. And I will see you soon. I'm swimming deep. Savage. Savage.